uh, I remember discussing this uh, with uh, Sheikh Bayer and he indicated and he said, it's like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this, this is only the, 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 the virtue of the Father, the grace that Allah gives to, uh, to his creation. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, if those creations of Allah are not specified to have a specific virtue or grace, they don't have that. I gave an example. He said, uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Prophet <coughs> told us that when he, he walks on, one, on, 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 on the road, on the street, the shaitan will never take that street. If he is on the street, the shaitan will take another street. Because of the fear he has for Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab but we find also in a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is standing up in Tahajjud in Qiyamud day and yet the shaitan comes and tries to squeeze him. And he, he holds him, he catches him. And then he, 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 he tries to tie him up so that he can show it to the people when the night comes, when the morning comes. Then the Prophet sallam says he remembers of his brother Sayyidina Suleiman Ali Salam when he said, Rabbi Akli Oh my Lord, please give me kingdom. Nobody inherit it after me. And part of the kingdom of Suleiman Ali Salam was Allah gave him control over the jinn. And so uh, he, he remembered this. And so this was also an indication that the Prophet Sallam he is capable also of covering the jinn, but because of other uh, respect for Sayyidina Suleiman Ali Salam, he let the jinn go after he catches the jinn. But with Sayyidina Umar ibn al Khattab, the, the, the shayateen won't even come there. That's why the Prophet says if the Umar comes on one route, the shaitan will take a different route. We can't face Sayyidina Umar. This does not mean that the maqam of Sayyidina Umar is now higher than that of the Prophet because of this incident. Similarly, when Allah has given a specific mercy for the month of Ramadan, uh, the Prophet Sallam said in the first 10 days is the Rahma and the second 10 days is the Mawafira, does not mean that there is no mercy in the second 10 days, also does not mean there is no mercy in the last 10 days. We, we continue to seek the mercy and the rahma of Allah to all the world of the May Allah Taala wa Taala grant us these things that the Prophet Sallam indicated in this hadith. Because the month of Ramadan, it is the month of purification. It is the month of coming closer to Allah Taala wa Taala. It is a month of cleansing. Uh, it is a month of. Uh, uh, attaining nearness to Allah Taala, it is a month of uh, the believers, the worshippers of Allah, regain by it through being involved in ibadah, and the, the arifin, the knowers of Allah Taala. It is a month in which the the, the anwar, the lights, the divine lights descend, and and they receive the, the ma'arifa and the, and the, the knowledge of Allah Taala. And the anwar, the lights of Allah Taala, and the asrar, and the secrets of Allah Taala. All of these are all uh, benefits and favors and blessings that descend in the month of Ramadan. Now, I um, the last week I spoke about the, the, the taqwa, which is a, a one of the major themes of the month of Ramadan. Allah Taala said. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون ويو إما fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you in order that perhaps you might you might achieve taqwa so taqwa is one of the major main objectives of the month from the other major objective of the month of Ramadan, it is to attain the mafia of the forgiveness of your Lord. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, which we started off with, He says, Sari'u ila mafia of the Allah says, 
come very quickly and hasten towards the mother of the Lord. Allah says, come, run towards the forgiveness of your Lord. And this forgiveness of your Lord, and also, as soon as a person receives his mother from his Lord, Allah will also grant his Jannah. Allah explains, He says, He said, The breath of the of, of Jannah it is like the breath of the heavens and the earth. Allah did not even mention about the man. He speaks about just the breath. He said, The breath of uh, the whiteness of, of, of Jannah is, is, is like the, 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 the heavens and the earth. And that Allah is only giving an indication of the vastness uh, without necessarily being specific about the, about the sizes. So Allah says, So hasten to the mother of your Lord and uh, and his Jannah, whose uh, breath is like the, is the is the heavens and the earth. This Jannah, Allah says, it has been prepared for the people of Taqwa, people of consciousness, people who who are aware of Allah. This ayah, although is not necessarily related to the month of Ramadan, but it is relevant because. The month of Ramadan's objective is to attain taqwa. Allah, after He gave us an order to fast and say fasting has been prescribed for you, as just it was prescribed for, for those before you, and then in the end of the ayah, He says that Allah come to taqwa so that you may attain the taqwa. And also, the, the reward for it is entrance into, into Jannah, into paradise. Uh, so the month of Ramadan is a month in which we prepare for our place in, in Akhir. And Allah Taala has made this a, a, a recurring event every year. Because, you know, we live in an age where it is very easy to forget Allah. It is also very easy to forget that there is paradise. It is also very easy to forget that there is Akhir. There is a life after this life. It is very easy to forget that once your life terminates in this world, you have no room to do anything. Everything else will be based upon what you used to do, all your work that you used to do in this life. And so Allah, He reminds us through these <coughs> uh, instructions that he, he has given us year in, year out, that uh, the month of Ramadan is really the month in which you should shut down and turn off all gadgets. Turn off and shut down from everything else and only focus on the ibadah of Allah and focus on coming to Allah to, the, to, the, to, to, to attain nearness and closeness of Allah. And the, the, the most important thing is to achieve Allah's forgiveness in his mother of Yura. The Prophet said in the same hadith we spoke about, he said, In this month, he said, you must increase in this month four things. Khaslatayni taradawna biha rabbukum. Two things, your Lord will be very pleased if you, if you increase it, you do it. Wa khaslatayni la gina lakum anhuma. Two things they, you, you, you cannot do without them. The two things which your Lord will be pleased with, the Prophet that said, akthiru, make it a lot. He said, Shahadatun an la ilaha illa is to make the Shahada of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and you renew, you make the Dhikr la ilaha illa a lot in, in this month of Ramadan. And the second thing the Prophet Sallam said, he said, What does the Rafiruna Rabba And is that you ask your Lord for your forgiveness, what you call his forgiveness. Ask your Lord for his forgiveness. Allah. You will be very pleased if you are engaged in these two things in this month a lot. Shahadatun an la ilaha illallah to continuously recite la ilaha illallah and renew your, 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 your declaration of your heed towards Allah wa ta'ala so that when this month of Ramadan comes, 
it comes out. You remember yourself exactly as the, the same as the day you entered into Islam. You, you renew that commitment that you don't have any other rap except Allah. You, you don't follow anybody, anybody else laws or rules except the laws and the rules of Allah and you submit to him completely. And also you seek for forgiveness because Allah, he knows that we make mistakes. And Allah, he, he has our creator, he's the Prophet Salam also as he is a messenger sent to, to Allah, to, by Allah to us, he advises, he says, if you stick on these two things, you are not going to be very pleased. Shahadatun an la ilaha illallah, and to ask for forgiveness of your Lord. Right? And that is, it goes hand in hand with the theme of the month of Ramadan, which is uh, to attainment of taqwa, consciousness of Allah, being aware of Allah. Because when you ask for forgiveness, it means you are mindful of your Lord. Because the, the, the forgiveness and Malafira has conditions. And those conditions, Allah addresses them in this ayah, which we we, we, we read. And the Prophet Salam also mentioned them in a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. That when a person makes tawbah and returns to Allah, ta'ala, one of the conditions is that you should make a firm need. First of all, you should feel remorse in your heart that you know what, I have done something against my Lord. And now, before I ask for forgiveness, already I feel a remorse. I feel that I've done something wrong. And I don't want to repeat this thing. It's, I'm ashamed to be standing in front of Allah that, that is the first uh, condition. The second condition, you make a firm, resolute intention to say, from now on, I will never ever go back to this wrong that I've done to my Lord. Because you know what is coming. You're going to be meeting your Lord when you leave this world. And so you don't deceive yourself, also you don't deceive your Lord. You'll be truthful to Allah wa and you'll be truthful to yourself. And then you, you, you don't you never repeat that which offended Allah wa ta'ala. And then the third thing is that uh, you, 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 you try to um, uh, you, 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 you never, the first thing is you, you try not to, uh, you feel remorse. The second thing is that you make a firm resolute that you, you never repeat it again and then you, you, you stick with it. I just uh, uh, passed the other a few protocol uh, conditions. But these conditions, Allah Taala also discusses them in the Quran. Uh, Allah then it describes who are these muttaqun. He says, Allah dhina. يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ Right. وَالْكَاذِ مِنَ الْغِيْذَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Now these people of taqwa, these people who have attained the taqwa of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, these are the people that uh, they give charity. They give infaq. They give charity فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ They give charity uh, at the time of easiness and also they still continue to, to give charity in the times of, of, of difficulties and challenges. And people have got a tendency to say, I, today or this month, my budget is a bit low and therefore I'm not going to give charity. So Allah also understand. That's, that's what most people say or that's what most people think. But Allah in this Holy Quran is describing to us who are these people of taqwa. Remember, when you come out from the month of Ramadan, you come out having attained taqwa. The sign that you have attained taqwa, these characteristics that Allah mentions in the Holy Quran needs to be visible. Allah says, uh, they, they give charity in times of easiness, meaning they, they've got plenty. They, they, they just give for the sake of Allah. And what the Rai, also even in, time, in difficult times, they still continue to give charity, well, according to the measure of what they have. If one day you have a thousand rand, uh, you, you, you give a uh, hundred rand, it's big. One day you've got ten rand, you, you give one rand. Uh, but the point is, continue to do charity all the times, not only in happy times, but in happy times as well as in, in times where you might find challenging to even give charity. Because this is part of 
at, uh, showing that you have taqwa is part of purifying your heart from being from, from, from clinging to anything other than Allah Taala. Because the sign of not giving charity it means uh, you are clinging to something else other than Allah, and that is not permitted for you. We must free ourselves from everything other than Allah, and that's why this month of Ramadan, it is month it uh, minanar, it is freedom from the hellfire. Shaykh Ibrahim says the sign of that is that you don't rely on anyone other than Allah, because Allah is the only one that free, frees you in, uh, from, from the hellfire. And then Allah continues, continues and He says, "Wal kadi min al ghira wal afina al nas." When, when somebody irritates you or makes you angry, you don't make your anger to come out. You keep it. You don't show it. You, you withhold yourself. This is a sign that you have tapped. If you, somebody annoys you or irritates you, and that anger and annoyance it becomes visible in you against that person, then that is a sign that the, 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 the tapwa there is, is not 100%. Because Allah is saying, this Jannatu Arduha Ka Ardi Samai Wal Ardi says, Wa'itta Dil Muttaqin, the one that is prepared for the people of taqwa. Then Allah says, Alladheena, meaning those people of taqwa, these are the ones that show these characteristics. So if a person is unable to withhold his or her anger in them against another person, it means that taqwa is not really is not there. And uh, and Sheikh Bai always likes to uh, every year in Ramadan he reminds us and he says, you cannot give what you don't what you call what you don't have. A sign that a person on month of Ramadan is completed is that when that person is being wronged, he will forgive, you will give Mahapura to another person. Because that person would have achieved and received Mahapura from Allah. If a person has not achieved or received Mahapura from Allah after Ramadan and, and, and he is wronged and he is unable to forgive, it means you didn't have it, you didn't, you didn't receive it in Ramadan. And so, so this ayah is encouraging us to, uh, to show <coughs> restraint and show these characteristics. And while Afina and Nasi to overlook what people, what the wrong things people do. Allah say, while Afina and Nasi overlook the people, don't take people to task. We overlook what they do because everybody makes mistakes. And then Allah says, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Indeed, Allah loves the, the doers of good. And then Allah carries on and He says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أنفس أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغَفَرُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَقِيَ لَفِيرُ بِنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And when uh, they, meaning the people of Taqwa, they have done a fahisha, fahisha meaning it's an indecency, something that Allah doesn't like, and then and they remember Allah Taala was and also then they ask Allah for forgiveness for that, and then Allah says, "Who then can give forgiveness of, of sins except Allah Taala?" In other words, Allah is saying there is nobody that can forgive other than I, and that can only happen when you regret in yourself. And this is why I say the mistaking for forgiveness from Allah has got conditions. Because part of this, this is the condition that Allah is, is putting here. Because they remember Allah that you know what, I have done something that is, is not right. And so they ask Allah for their no for their sins. And then Allah says, who can forgive other than Allah And then Allah says, and also they don't go back to this sin. They don't go back to do while knowing that they're doing something that is uh, what you call is, uh, is, is wrong. This is uh, the other condition that you don't return to, to, uh, to, 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 to the sin. Then ulaika jazaahum maghfiratun mir rabbihim wa jannatun tajri min tahtiha al-anhaaru khalidina fiha wa ni'ma ajru al-'aamilin Allah says these are the people who have achieved um, 
Mahafira from their Lord. These are the people who have achieved Mahafira from their Lord, and also they will achieve from their Lord the Jannatun, uh, where, uh, what you call the uh, gardens, and beneath which rivers uh, flow. And when they see this uh, place that Allah places them in paradise, and then Allah says, "For Ni'ma Ajrul Amin." What an awesome! as they put it in, in, in this, today's language. What an awesome achievement that you, you, you attained. What an achievement, Allah says, because you were among the workers of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Now, it's, it's easy to say uh, the middle 10 days of the month of Ramadan is a, is, a, is a month of forgiveness and therefore automatically I will achieve forgiveness from Allah and Ma'afira. It doesn't work like that. It, it, it has to be a firm resolution in the heart that I've done something that I was not supposed to do. So the month of Ramadan is not a month of saying, I'm just going to stay away from food and drink during the day, and then uh, and then at night, then I'll just engage in ibadah without thinking about what you are doing, without having a thought on why you are fasting, without having a thought on why you are standing up in the Tarawi Salah at night. But the month of Ramadan has got other things that it is connected with that is supposed to help you to connect with your Lord. It's a time of introspection. It's a time to be alone with yourself and your Lord and see what is it that I am doing in my life. You basically reflect on your past year and then you make a firm resolution so that by the time the next Ramadan comes, then you, you, your life has improved, your relationship with Allah has proved, you have attained the consciousness and the taqwa of Allah when you come out from it. It's not automatic that when I fast, automatically I will get that taqwa. It's an effort, you have to make an effort. So you have to work. So may Allah wa ta'ala uh, help us in this journey of the month of Ramadan. And in the last two thirds of Ramadan that has uh, uh, that has, is remaining, if we didn't spend the first one third the way we're supposed to spend it, we ask Allah to give us the tawfiq to double the effort. And we see that uh, in the life of the Prophet, especially in the last 10 days of Ramadan, we see he, 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 he used to stand up very well. A standing up that is not the same as the previous 20 days of the month of Ramadan. Because now the month of Ramadan is going away and the Prophet ﷺ said, Cast is the one who when the month of Ramadan comes and it leaves and it did not benefit anything from it. And because the month of Ramadan is the month of giving, uh, Allah has created so many excuses to purify ourselves and purify our hearts. It's a month, it's a month of cleansing ourselves. Um, anything that you do, whether you give something to someone to break their fast, whether you do a good deed, Allah, you just forgive. Any, any, Allah has created so many excuses for forgiveness. We say that the same way how Allah has created many excuses to attain a risk. Uh, a person will be collecting boxes here every Tuesday because the, 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 the trash truck comes every Tuesday here. And that becomes a source of risk and sustenance for somebody. Without uh, thinking over too much, uh, there are many asbab that Allah has created in order for human beings to receive this. In the same way, Allah has created uh, many asbab or reasons why he needs to forgive us. Just to give somebody half a day when they are fasting, Allah will forgive you everything. And so this is the month of practicing that, so that by the time the month of Ramadan comes out, we are in a position to be able to forgive the next person. If we can't forgive the next person, it means this month came and it passed, but we never receive forgiveness from Allah. Because it is not possible to give what you don't have. If you receive forgiveness from Allah, then you will be able to show by forgiving other people when they are wrong. May Allah Ta'ala make us among the people who are forgiven by the time the month of Ramadan is passed. May Allah give us the tawfiq to be able to connect with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and increase with that the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the reading of La Ilaha Illallah and also the reading of Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah,